Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, nutritional supplements, the health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off of brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business Earn thank you checks associated with having your own business and helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can enjoy tax benefits as well. Sign up off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. Or you can call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Balm, and Truth Serum, all made with generous amounts of vitamin C and retinol 5%, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, oil, water, Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our True Skin Health products. If you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, if you're dealing with accelerated aging of the skin, or if you don't want to be dealing with accelerated aging of your skin, you need to check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with vitamin C, as well as our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're talking about the electrolytes, the water-soluble electro, electrical minerals that are especially important for the heart. Yes, it's true. There are other water-soluble energizing nutrients that play important roles in heart health. The B vitamins come to mind. The B vitamins are key players in, in uh, heart health. I personally believe that B vitamin deficiency is, is at least partially behind our Uh, Our heart disease epidemic, B vitamins are actually used as prescription medicine for folks dealing with heart disease. B, uh, B6 in particular, also folic acid and B12 and the B vitamins, no one can argue, are incredibly valuable for cardiac health. Vitamin C, also involved in energizing and protecting heart cells. It's also important for the uh, production of the connective tissue matrix, the bag that holds the heart in place. The connective tissue also feeds and oxygenates and detoxifies heart cells, and you cannot make connective tissue without vitamin C. Dr. Matthias Rath actually calls heart disease subclinical scurvy, or not even subclinical. He calls it scurvy. He says 
heart disease is a form of vitamin C deficiency. And his point is well taken. It could very well be, at least it's partially. It could very well be that it's partially related to vitamin C deficiency. We know that scurvy affects the circulatory system quite dramatically. So it could be that vitamin C is involved. Vitamin C deficiency is involved in in uh, our epidemic of heart disease. Still, as important as all these nutrients are, vitamin C and the B complex, it is, and also, by the way, the essential fatty acids, also very, very important for cardiac health. As important as all these nutrients are, it is the electrolytes that most directly affect the electrical, rhythmic beating and pumping of heart muscle. In fact, it's literally the movement of these electrolytes into and out of heart cells, into and out of all cells, really, that accounts for the, the electrical conductivity, the little tiny battery called a cell. And given the heart's major electrical conductivity, it's the most electrical system in the body, these electrolytes are super duper important for cardiac health. The key word to keep in mind when it comes to electrolytes is balance. Electrolytes work by flowing in and out of cells. And for this to occur correctly, appropriate amounts relative to each other have to be present. Electrolytes flow into and out of cells through channels. You probably heard of drugs called calcium channel blockers. These are drugs that block the movement of the electrolyte calcium into and out of cells. Specifically, when you're taking a calcium channel blocker, it usually involves the circulatory system in the heart, but calcium channel blockers will block calcium from entering in through channels that are in all cells. This accounts for side effects. Doctors somehow feel like slowing down the heart by blocking the influx of calcium through calcium channels is actually a good thing. I can't see how you think blocking electrical energy from going into heart cells is a good thing. Nonetheless, calcium channel blockers are among the best-selling cardiovascular drugs there are. So the electrolytes work by flowing in and out of cells, and, and uh, this is how electrical current is generated. The appropriate amounts of electrolytes relative or compared to each other are or have to be present. The electrolytes have to be in the body in balance, like wheels on a train. You could say energy is delivered to cells via the electrolytes, or uh, uh, via the electrolytes on a train that's made up of four wheels: calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. A train made up of four wheels we call electrolytes, and the electrolytes, like wheels, have to be in the correct balance. If the balance is off, or if there's not electro and uh, not enough electrolytes to form the wheels, energy will not get delivered to the cells, and this cannot help but cause disruptions in healthy cell functioning, especially of our most highly electrical cell systems, like the, the nerve cells, the brain cells, and the heart. Interestingly, if in the case of the brain, it takes a lot of electrolyte deficiency to have an impact on the brain because the brain is selfish and greedy, and under conditions of deficiency, it is the brain and not the heart or any other, part of, any other part of the body that will get the first crack at nutrition. The best sources of electrolytes, or at least one of the best sources of electrolytes, are the veggies. And veggies, as we've said so many times on this program, should form the bulk of our diet. The interesting thing about veggies is when you start off your meals with veggies, or if you start off your day with veggies, with a salad or with vegetable juice, you're much less likely to eat unhealthy foods. Not only, uh, not only that, but because of the fiber content in veggies, when you start your day off or your meal off with veggies, you're much less, less likely to eat much of anything because the fiber will fill you up. So you're not going to eat as unhealthily if you start your meals and your days off with vegetables, and you're not going to eat as much if you start your meals off or your days off with veggies. Start your meal off with a big cup of homemade Vitamix vegetable juice. Watch what happens. You're going to find that you're much less likely to eat a big meal. If you start your day off, you're going to be much less likely to need a coffee. Start your day off with some Beyond Tangy Tangerine and a nice cup of vegetable juice. See how much better you feel. Take your probiotics with your vegetable juice, too, because probiotics are good bacteria. React with veggies and form all kinds of wonderful compounds uh, that can help feed good bacteria in the gut. The biggest complaint people have about veggies is the bitter taste. And this has to do with chemicals called alkaloids. And also, probably has a little bit to do with the minerals, particularly sulfur, which can taste a little bit harsh. These days, genetic, through, uh, genetic manipulation, many of these compounds have been removed to make veggies more palatable. And this, of course, reduces the nutritional value of these super important foods, the vegetables. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. 
We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, If you have questions about the electrolytes or heart health issues or anything we're speaking about here today, our Truth Skin Health products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. If you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com. Pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and help me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. 866 735 2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking about the uh, veggies. The biggest complaint people have with veggies is the bitter taste. If veggies tasted super-duper sweet, I don't think we'd have so much of a problem eating our vegetables or eating our broccoli. But these vegetables just have a bitter taste, and the bitter taste has something to do with the medicine, the medicinal value of, of uh, vegetables, the alkaloids, and also the minerals, particularly sulfur. These days, farmers uh, know that people don't like veggies that are bitter, so... Uh, through genetic manipulation, not necessarily GMO, uh, not necessarily the high-tech genetic manipulation like GMO manipulation, but just breeding techniques. A lot of these, uh, these bitter compounds have been removed to make veggies taste better. Of course, that makes them less nutritionally valuable given that these bitter compounds have so much therapeutic and medicinal value. The most important of the bitter compounds are the ones that we've been talking about. One of the most important group of these bitter compounds are the phenols and the phenolic acids. Started off our conversation with, on heart disease by talking about the phenols and phenolic acids. The phenols are really powerful, powerful substances. They're not found in, uh, in veggies in very high concentrations, so they're just merely bitter in, uh, in vegetables. But phenols in high enough concentrations can give you a wicked burn if you put it on your skin. In fact, the phenols were first used as uh, skin peel agents, as ex uh, uh, major exfoliating agents. Not really exfoliating, major exfoliating agents. You get a really, really deep skin peel with a phenol peel, and they still do phenol peels. Dermatologists will still do phenol peels, although nowadays they do alpha hydroxy acid peels. Much more gentle agents are available. But back when they first discovered how to do skin peels at the turn of the 20th century, phenol peels were all the rage and all the... The, uh, they didn't have movie stars back then. They had uh, theater stars, and all the theater stars were, were getting phenol peels to make themselves look younger. Phenols are really powerful substances. Um, but in vegetables and in, in produce, vegetables and fruits, they're only in a very, very trace amounts. So instead of being super, super powerful, they're just bitter and medicinal. Very medicinal, by the way. And they can support heart health. They can support brain health. And in my opinion, removing them out of your veggies through genetic manipulation is probably not such a good idea. There's an interesting reason why veggies are bitter and why there's this generalized notion that kind of a meme, kind of a belief that we're not going to willingly eat our vegetables. At least kids won't willingly eat their vegetables. And that's because vegetables are actually poisonous. Yes, vegetables are poisonous. All of these things that we're talking about, these medicinal compounds, the phenols and the phenolic acids and the tannins, and later on we're going to be talking about... Uh, about a medicinal compound called the glucosinolates. All of these medicinal compounds are actually poisons. They're plant poisons. Their role in the plant is to act as natural pesticides. They kill bugs. And they also provide protection against predators. That's their role. They're not in the plant to provide nutrition for us humans to eat them. They're in the plant to protect the plant. In nature, bitter means poison. Sweet, or at least non-bitter, means edible. So why is it, you ask, that veggies are good for us and they're poisonous? Well, as it turns out, the poisons actually stimulate our body to make anti-poisons. That's right, the plant nutrients, the so-called phytonutrients, are actually poisons, but in response to these microscopic trace amounts of poisons, the body makes its own detoxification molecules. We upregulate our detoxification chemistry by putting these tiny, tiny almost homeopathic trace amounts of poisons in our body through vegetables. It is kind of a homeopathic phenomenon where very, 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 very tiny amounts of poison stimulate our body to make anti-poison. You can think of it as biochemical exercise. Scientists call this hormesis, H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S. -E -S. 
biochemical hormesis. Hormesis is the idea that a little bit of stress is actually a good thing. Exercise, of course, is the classic example of a little bit of stress being a good thing. And you could think of eating your broccoli as biochemical exercise or eating your Brussels sprouts or cauliflower or, or watercress or any other uh, a bitter or harsh type of harsh tasting vegetable. You can think of it as biochemical exercise. In response to physical stress at the gym, in response to lifting weights, we grow bigger muscles as a mechanism for handling stress. And in response to biochemical, uh, biochemical stresses, in a controlled Goldilocks amount, not too much, not too little, our body upregulates. I love that word, upregulates. It increases detox chemistry to better handle toxins. That's what uh, scientists call hormesis. The same phenomena happens, by the way, psychologically in terms of mental stresses and emotional stresses and trauma. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger, as Friedrich Nietzsche said in the 19th century. Some cancer researchers, according to an article published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, propose that heightened bitterness may be a positive anti-cancer feature. And this is where the glucosinolates come in. Glucosinolates, very powerful medicinal compounds, super bitter tasting. They're found in broccoli, and this is what gives the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, and uh, cauliflower. Uh, this is what gives the, um, the cruciferous vegetables their powerful detox, uh, detox pro uh, properties. The glucosinolates are detoxification properties for the liver, or uh, molecules for the liver. Also for protection from reproductive cancers, the glucosinolates protect us from excess estrogen. In fact, the glucosinolates, which protect us from excess estrogen, are so bitter that they're actually used as markers for bitterness by the food industry. The food industry will, te will literally test the broccoli for glucosinolates to see if it's too bitter for, for, people, to, uh, for people to eat or, or to be sold. Mustard greens, horseradish, cabbage, these are also good sources of glucosinolates. And uh, as with broccoli, the more bitter the taste, the more glucosinolate power the vegetable will have. By the way, glucosinolate is spelled G-L-U-C-O-S-I-N-O-L-A-T-E, glucosinolate. If you've ever been told not to eat broccoli because it can have harmful effects on your thyroid, you've been warned about the glucosinolates. It's thought that the glucosinolates are the source of the goitrogenic properties, the antithyroid properties attributed to broccoli as well as the other cruciferous vegetables. There's two other glucosinolates that are found in cruciferous vegetables that have been in the news over the last, well, a bit, maybe the last 10 or 15 years, uh, they've been popularized, and you can buy them through Life Extension Magazine or, or uh, in health food stores. They're called DIM, diindoleal methane, and I3C, indole-3-carbonyl. You just call them DIM and I3C. Both of these are forms of glucosinolates. They're found in the cruciferous vegetables. DIM was actually invented or, or uh, uh, produced, first produced, or isolated, I should say, by a doctor here in Boulder, and I was actually working with DIM back in the early 1990s uh, for skincare, uh, in skincare products. He brought me a whole bunch of this DIM stuff, and I was formulating skincare products with it, and uh, as it turns out, the DIM actually has some, it didn't really work much, didn't do much in skincare, but it actually has some pre pretty interesting properties when it comes to protection from excess estrogen, likewise I3C, and this is all based on the fact that these are glucosinolates, which we will continue talking about tomorrow as we uh, finish up discussing heart disease and uh, some of the unusual strategies that you can use to protect your heart. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny, 442-366-6010 is our number. This just... Okay, we are back on the bright side, and we have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the electrolytes or glucosinolates or heart disease or health challenge, you or a loved one, may be dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or comments or success story, likewise, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off of brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blogs, blog posts, and news stories and videos at all our websites, as well as uh, lots of good health information and the longevity products. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. 
com as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. A couple of stories I want to read to you, and uh, then we'll get your calls. From the journal Nature Communications, common acid reflux medications like Prevacid and Nexium may promote chronic liver disease. 10% of the population, that is 10% of us, 30 million people or so, are on a PPI drug, a proton pump inhibitor drug. These are drugs that are used to treat GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or also heartburn. Unfortunately, they also uh, mess up our gut, as it turns out. Taking a medication to, uh, to suppress gastric acid, stomach acid secretion, can help change the composition of our gut microbiome, the all-important world of bacteria, universe of bacteria that live in our intestines. This, this is the foundation of good health. The foundation of good health is the gut bacteria, and anything we do that compromises the health of those bacteria can wreak havoc on our health. And that includes antibiotics in the water. That includes antibiotics that we take intentionally. That includes PPI drugs. There's so many things that we do, fluoride in the water. There's so many things that we do that kind of conspire to destroy these gut bacteria. It, it's... It's inevitable that we're going to have a disease crisis. You've got to focus on the gut. You've got to focus on those gut bacteria. There's lots of ways to do it. Get on the nightly essence. Make sure you're using a good probiotic supplement. And by the way, sometimes you'll respond better to one probiotic supplement uh, than to another. There's no real way of knowing unless you try them out. I like the nightly essence. I always try it. I always suggest to use that one first because it has digestive enzymes and other enzymes in it. And it is also a good source of... Uh, it uh, has a multiple strains of bacteria, and it has a big, healthy dose of probiotics in it. Plus, I know the guy who makes the stuff, and I know the guy who formulates it, and I have a lot of respect for him. He's been on the program before. So I always recommend the Nightly Essence first, but if you don't get benefits from one brand of probiotic, try another. Keep trying. If you don't get benefits from one dose of probiotics, raise your dose. Keep playing with it. And also make sure you're eating fermented foods. Fermented foods will not only provide you with bacteria, but they'll also provide you with fiber, which is important for the bacteria, and it will also provide you with nitrogen, which is also important for the bacteria. Speaking of gut bacteria, check this out. Chocolate lovers will uh, enjoy this. Why chocolate is good for your gut. Researchers from the Department of Food and Nutritional Sciences at the University of Reading in the United Kingdom measured higher levels of certain bacteria in the intestine of, intestines of human volunteers who drank high cocoa chocolate milk for four weeks. Hmm, interesting. The same team previously showed that components in cocoa can reduce the growth of bad bacteria, particularly something called clostridium, which is present in the guts of individuals who have uh, inflammatory bowel diseases. So I guess chocolate could be part of a healthy diet. It's probably not the chocolate. You know, chocolate is also very medicinal. Speaking of bitter compounds, a lot of those bitter alkaloids that we were talking about earlier in terms of vegetables are found in very high concentrations in chocolate. And when we talk about chocolate, we've got to distinguish chocolate's benefits from cocoa. Chocolate is not cocoa. Chocolate is cocoa plus sugar, plus fat, plus lecithin, plus who knows what else they put in there. Cocoa, on the other hand, is a highly medicinal substance. And nobody likes cocoa. Nobody will voluntarily eat baking chocolate. You ever try baking chocolate? It isn't very tasty. But you can take baking chocolate and you can make your own cocoa capsules. And now you got yourself a highly medicinal substance, particularly as it turns out for digestive health, but also for heart health. The electrolytes or uh, the, I should say, the phytonutrients, the plant nutrients, the alkaloids that are found in cocoa can be very helpful for heart health. And then I'll see one more here on, uh, one more here on probiotics. Study shows probiotics can prevent sepsis in infants. Sepsis is a severe complication, uh, bacterial infection. It's a complication of bacterial infection that occur in the blood. It does happen quite uh, somewhat frequently in, uh, in infants. About a million infant deaths worldwide are attributed to sepsis, uh, especially in developing countries. As it turns out, probiotics can actually prevent sepsis. The good bacteria protect us from the bad bacteria. The good bacteria protect us from excessive fungus. This is why it's so important to focus on gut health. If you have chronic yeast infections or if you have candida infections or if you're dealing with blood toxicity, using a good probiotic supplement, using your nightly essence, eating fermented foods, supporting gut health can be protective against the bad bacteria. All right, uh, I'm going to do one more and then we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is from the journal Appetite. This is really interesting. New study discovers mushrooms can be as satiating as meat when protein levels are matched. That is, if you uh, have the same amount of protein. Protein is the most satisfying 
of all macronutrients. And when you match the protein in mushrooms to the protein that you would have in a steak, for example, it turns out that you get the same levels of satiety, satisfaction. And that's really what it's all about when it comes to appetite regulation. This was a, this was a, uh, a study that was published in the journal Appetite. It showed that eating a mushroom-rich breakfast may result in less hunger and a greater feeling of fullness after the mushroom breakfast, after you eat a uh, mushroom breakfast, than compared to the meat breakfast. So if you like your mushrooms... Enjoy them, especially with eggs. Put your mushrooms, mix mushrooms and eggs together, and uh, you'll find that could be incredibly satiating. Uh, protein in the mushrooms and the protein in the eggs will uh, fill you up as much as as much as meat. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with meat if you if you choose wisely, but uh, mushrooms also will get you vitamin D, and and uh, good uh, mushrooms are also a good source of fiber, which you're not going to get from meat. Okay, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to the phones and welcome Robin from Indiana to the bright Good morning. side. Good morning. Hey, what's Good up, morning. Robin? My first time calling in. Nice to speak with you, Pharmacist Ben. Nice to speak with you. I believe you know my son, Nurse uh, Anthony. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. Awesome. He turned yeah, you on to the bright side. And, yes. Thank you so much. The first time calling in, and uh, Tony shared with me last night that awesome stuff that you mixed the plain yogurt with sugar. Oh, my gosh. I used that on my face. My face just glowed. And then this did you, morning, did you write a Facebook post on remember. that? Did you do a face? Somebody I, put a Facebook yes, post. Yes, I on. did. <laughs> that was you. Okay, yes, that's that great. Was me. That Thank was you. Me. I appreciate that. I have many questions, but I will just. I'm just going to ask you this one today. Um, I'm considering. I've been on Longevity products about a year now. I'm enjoying it. My health has just turned around. I'm 62 years old. I feel fantastic. Um, I started going to the chiropractor, and they have this stuff. Uh, a way of doing the massage called cupping. I oh, yeah. wonder if you, how you feel about that and you I, think I, it's a good thing to do. It's not a bad thing to do. I don't know if it's going to you know, make a huge difference, but I do have a, lot of fr- I have a lot of chiropractor friends who use it, and I have a lot of friends who are patients, and they uh, enjoy their cupping, especially if they have things, uh, real weird joint problems that nobody could figure out, especially in the shoulder area. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of cupping, I, although I haven't experienced it personally, but I've heard really good things about it. Hey, can you hang on just a moment, Robin? We've got to take a commercial break. I'll finish up when we come back. Absolutely. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Don't go away. All right. Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll return right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Robin in Bloomington, Indiana. You there, Robin? Robin? Yes, I am. Okay. I've so, been uh, in uh, some random accidents over the years. So way back in my past, I'm 62 now, and I have a lot of pain in my neck and shoulders. And, of course, you tell that to your random, you know, medical doctor. They want to just throw pills at you. Well, I don't want to do that. You know, been there, done that. And I figured I'd go to some chiropractic care and get adjustments. And uh, that cupping massage was brought up. And so did I just you, I thought you, I wanted did, to ask you about it. Well, here, cupping is just its a way of applying suction to the skin. And uh, it helps stimulate lymphatic flow, blood circulation. It can help re- reduce pain, relieve pain. They do consider it to be kind of like junk science. Doctors do. But a lot of chiropractors are big on it, and I have talked to patients, friends of mine who've been patients, and uh, they've, they've got some really good results with it. I would certainly try it. It's not going to hurt you, that's for sure. Uh, but if you do have some kind of structural issues going on there, it's not going to help with that. It's not going to improve any structural damage. What it will do is support lymphatic drainage. The lymph system uh, can get congested and clogged up, and there's a lot of lymph action right around your shoulder and neck area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have yeah. lymph issues... Um, if you have lymphatic issues, uh, it may help you there. It'll improve circulation. As far as structural damage goes, I don't know that necessarily you're going to get much benefit that way, but you're really smart to go to a chiropractor, in my opinion. Chiropractors okay. specialize in, in the joints and, and in, the, uh, uh, in the musculoskeletal system, and they have a lot of good ideas that doctors don't have. So I, I, I commend you for going to a chiropractor, and don't let them cut into you unless they have to. Don't let a doctor or surgeon cut into you unless you absolutely have no options. I'm sorry, what were you going to okay. say, Robin? That's awesome. No, I, I'm so glad to hear that because whenever I've brought up the pain before, you know, they just say, well, do, you know, they, they want to throw a, a pain pill at you. And I don't, I don't want to go that route. I had gone that route years ago 
and I'm not going back down that well, road again. You're smart. You're so. smart. You're smart. Good, good thinking. Now, here's a couple things for you. Uh, stretching, if you're not already, that can help sometimes. Doing some really good stretching. I'm sure Anthony can help you there, your son. And then also uh, building the connective tissue. Doing connective tissue building strategies can sometimes help with joint, and joint pain. Uh, using things like bone broth protein, bone soup, vitamin C, more protein, essential fats, calcium and magnesium, and the electrolytes. These are all strategies for building connective tissue, collagen supplements, hyaluronic acid supplements. All of these can help you build connective tissue, and sometimes that can be supportive for, for joint pain, too. All right, I got to motivate Ron, and we'll get some more calls. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank say you. hi to your son for Have me. Say hi to Anthony. For me. I will. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's go to John in Kansas. Good morning, John. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, how are you doing, Ben? Uh, doing good. Enjoyed uh, your presentations in Norman and in Dallas this year. Oh, okay. Nice, nice to talk to you, John. Uh, Norman, uh, that was yeah. earlier this year. You weren't in. Uh, I was just in Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago. Are you friends with right. Stan? Uh, we've met Stan several times. He's been up in Wichita and uh, South Central Kansas as well as, uh, of course, we've seen him at the at the regional and. Uh, January in Dallas and then down at the convention. Well, let me give a shout out to my friend Stan, Stay Naturals, TMR, Total Meal Replacement. If you're doing longevity or if you're not doing longevity and you want a good meal replacement protein supplement, TMR is awesome stuff. You can get it by calling 866-735-2470 or off uh, your longevity website. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. What, what were you going to ask? That's all right. Um, we had uh, someone come to us with an enlarged heart uh, athlete that's been told he can't play his sport. Oh, I'm bummer. Uh, Recommended Young guy? Some, uh, yeah, junior in college. Okay. Oh, that's and too bad. And recommended the, health, the, the uh, brain and heart pack, the bone and Good joint choice. pack, all the, the, the extra stuff. But uh, he's wanting to put on some weight, uh, 5 to 10 pounds, and I didn't know whether it was better for him to be uh, paleo or keto. Keto, definitely keto uh, for the okay. heart. What, what's up? Uh, what else does he have, though? That's kind of unusual. What, what, he must have some else. Uh, any other health issues, thyroid issues, or... Or anything no, like that I asked going on? him, and he has he has no symptoms. He's very frustrated. He doesn't feel bad in any way. He's not been under a doctor's care prior to this. He has no other obvious huh. chronic degenerative diseases at all. Well, you, usually that's the sign that the heart is working too hard, just like any other muscle in the body. When it when it works really hard, uh, it that's gets what bigger. He was told. Yeah, so that's what he was told. There's a valve that's. that's uh, okay, I was going to say, it's a, is there a valve issue? Yeah. Yeah, that can definitely be a problem if there's a valve issue. If the blood is not moving through the heart as effectively as it could, you've got valves in the heart, and they've got, they sort of di direct the flow in, of blood in the right direction. If the valves are, are damaged, if he had, say, rheumatic fever when he was a kid, or if there's some kind of infection going on, or for whatever reason, if the valve is damaged, that can cause the heart to enlarge uh, because it's got to push harder to get the blood to go through. Uh, so that could be an issue if he has some kind of heart valve issue. The B vitamins are going to be very helpful for him. The electrolytes will be very helpful for him. Just keep good choice with the the uh, brain and, uh, with the brain and heart pack. Um, uh, I would also throw in uh, the ultimate niacin and the ultimate selenium, and make sure he's working yep. on digestive health. Throw in uh, you might want to consider using uh, using the nightly essence as well as the fucoid Z. And then last but not least, the glucogel caps, which will help build connective tissue. Sometimes when the valves are damaged, it's actually a connective tissue problem. Connective tissue is in the valves and in the heart as well as it is in other parts of the body. So building connective tissue can sometimes be helpful. Use, your, um, use the glucogel caps in combination with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Always mix your glucogel caps with the BTT. The vitamin C and the BTT will help activate the uh, glucosamine in the glucogel caps. Last but not least, if he just does some gelatin, that might help also in terms of connective tissue. But if he has a valve issue, that makes sense. That uh, That is one of the causes of an enlarged heart. Uh, all, right, all right, John. Anything else, buddy? I uh, appreciate it. Okay, take care, man. All right, let's go to another John in Texas. Good morning, John. Welcome to the Bright Side. Thanks, Ben. Hey. Hey, Ben, we had a conversation that we didn't finish out. I'm not sure whether you discussed it on your program after that, but it was like the second word in vitamins. In other words, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The second word in minerals. Oxide, no, minerals, the second magnesium. the second word in minerals, not in vitamins. You want to distinguish minerals from vitamins. They're not the same thing. Minerals are rocks. Vitamins are organic chemicals, uh, molecules, Correct. if you will. So the the, the second minerals. T think about it this way: if you take a bunch of rocks, right, or a bunch of stones from your garden and put them in water, they're just going to sink to the bottom. They're not going anywhere. 
In order for uh, the same thing will happen if you eat a mineral, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to get absorbed. It's not going to be involved in much chemistry. So the body has to kind of, in, in order for the body to utilize that mineral, it has to be associated with something. So by associating the mineral with another compound like a carbonate or an oxide or uh, or a glycinate or a second word, if you will, a second element, if you will, it makes it easier for the body to process. Right? Minerals actually don't even exist by themselves. Minerals by themselves are elements off the periodic table, and they don't exist by themselves in nature. So you always see minerals or, or elements combined with other things. That's what really, technically speaking, that's what a mineral is. It's, a, it's an element off the periodic table, like carbon or magnesium or calcium combined with something else so that it can be right. it can be util, it can be used you can't use calcium by itself but you can use calcium carbonate or calcium uh, lactate or other forms of calcium the second word will be an indicator for how well that calcium or magnesium will be absorbed carbonates are typically not absorbed very effectively oxides likewise are not absorbed very effectively on the other hand if you take something that's already in the body like an amino acid and you attach it to a mineral like a glycinate, like glycine is an amino acid, or perhaps an amino acid like a picolinate, so as in zinc picolinate, or sometimes Citrate. methionine, uh, you'll get much better absorption. So you want to look for a mineral that has the second word that is an amino acid. Methionine is a good one. Picolinate and glycine are also good ones. If you have the second word as an amino acid, you're going to get much better absorption. If the second word is an oxide or a carbonate, you're probably not going to get anywhere near the absorption that you would from a, a, an amino acid combination. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not confusing things too much. The, the second word is going to indicate how well the mineral is absorbed. If the second word is an amino acid, you're going to get much better absorption than if the second word is a carbonate or an oxide. And those, are, those are basically, the, those are the most common types of nutrition, uh, of mineral combinations. Oxides, uh, oxides uh, carbonates, sometimes lactates, and then also uh, uh, the amino acid combinations. Go with the amino acids, in my opinion. Yeah. Is that helpful? Well, oh, yeah. Sometimes hard to find. As truck drivers, we tend to, to lean over towards the Walmarts, the uh, Internet, the John. Maybe. Can you, internet, it, I know. Go with the Internet. Just look up calcium... Uh, Calcium, uh, the, best, the best form of calcium that I know is the chelated calciums. So look for, and then, by the way, that's what it means to chelate. When you combine a mineral with an amino acid, it's going to be a chelated amino acid, or a chelated mineral. So chelation is the process of attaching a mineral uh, to, an, to a, uh, an amino acid. So look for the chelated minerals. Those are going to usually be the best ones. All right, okay. that's, the, that's uh, the music. John, got to go, buddy. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. And uh, hope we helped you out. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236. I'm sorry, 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for The Bright Side Ben team. Please consider joining the team. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business. Also, check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 